Today we're going to build this epoxy and bentwood sandwich headphone stand. If you're familiar with my older videos, then you know that I've actually built a headphone stand in one of my past videos. I've been using it for about three years now, and it's worked out perfectly. In fact, if you're looking to build yourself a headphone stand, that might even be a better option for you. So I'll link that video below. But the reason that I decided to build a new one is a couple months back, I built myself a new desk, all out of walnut. And as you guys know, I love using walnut, but the walnut headphone stand on top of a walnut desk, it was just a bit too much, even for me. On top of that, I had an idea for a new technique using epoxy and wood, and I wanted to use this as a sort of proof of concept. So the fact that it's a smaller project, and because I could use a new headphone stand, it just all seemed to line up nicely. So I want to tell you more about that idea, but let's just jump into the build first, and then I'll talk about it at the end of the video. All right, the first step was creating my forms for bending my wood. Assuming you don't have a CNC, the way that I'd do this is start by drawing out the shape onto a piece of MDF or whatever you want to make your forms from. Then use a bandsaw to rough it out and sanders, rasps, or anything else you might need to work your way to the line. But if you do happen to have a CNC, this is probably the easiest way to go. So I'm going to use my X-Carve to create a couple template pieces, and that's as simple as importing my drawing into easel, securing my material, and letting it carve. And if you're interested in learning more about the X-Carve, I'll throw some links in the description so you can check it out. In any case, once you have your template cut to your liking, the next step is to make three more identical pieces since the forms are going to need to be three inches thick and we're using three quarter inch thick material. To make these, I'm going to trace them out on the bandsaw just proud of the line and then use a flush trim bit over at the router table to build them up. Next, I'm going to take some packing tape and cover the inside faces of each form, making sure not to miss anything. Here, I'm measuring and cutting off a piece of beechwood, and I'm really not going to need a lot for this project. I'd say that the two-foot chunk that I used would probably be enough to make two complete stands. After I'd cut the piece to 3 inches wide, I rotated it 90 degrees and cut out veneers that are about a 32nd of an inch thick. And I'm going to be using 4 on each side of the sandwich, which means that the wood on either side is going to be about an eighth of an inch thick. Now during the glue up, something really unexpected happened, at least for me. In fact, you can see it starting in this shot. If I play it back and forth in fast motion, you see how it looks like the wood is breathing or something? Well, for whatever reason, these things wanted to turn into a taco shell when they got glue on them. I actually slightly cracked one of them just trying to flatten it back out. But luckily the form was enough weight to keep it flat while I got everything together. And by the time I was getting my second piece in the form, I had learned my lesson. Now, I know what you're probably thinking to yourself here. Dang, Chris's beard looks so kempt whatever the opposite of unkempt is. First off, thank you. And second, thanks Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. So by now I'm sure you've heard of Dollar Shave Club and you're familiar with them. But you might not know that they do more than just razors. In fact, they can deliver all of your grooming needs. Shampoo, face cleanser, body cleanser, even toothbrushes and toothpaste. And of course, all of your shaving essentials. And that's probably my single favorite thing about them. In the past, I used to text my wife asking if she could pick up my grooming needs. Then she'd text back and say, who is this? I'd say, Chris, toothpaste, shampoo, and some new blades should do the trick. Then she'd be all, I seriously don't know who this is. I think you might have the wrong number. Then I'd get home and none of the stuff was ever there. I'd ask her why she didn't get any of it. And she'd say, I have no idea what you're talking about. You never texted me. And I was forced to go through life with a ratty looking beard. But I don't have to do that anymore. And neither do you. And that's thanks to Dollar Shave Club. 
So for a limited time, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor and a tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter for only $5. After that, the restock boxes ship regularly sized products at the regular price. Just go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Farai's to get your starter set for only 5 bucks, or better yet, click the link in the description. I promise, you won't be underwhelmed. Or whatever the opposite of whelmed is. Okay, thanks Dollar Shave Club. After the pieces were out of the forms, Sean used the bandsaw to trim off some of the extra material so that we'd have clean edges for casting the epoxy. Now because the material is so thin, it had a decent amount of spring back. So to cast the epoxy, I thought it would be best to use my forms to help the wood hold its shape. So here I'm using some hot glue to hold it in place. Then I use more hot glue to stick the forms down to a piece of melamine. For the epoxy, I'm going to be using Total Boat Thick Set, since I'm pouring this pretty deep. And I wasn't sure how much to use, so I ended up making my 3 to 1 mix 24 ounces. But we only used 16 ounces. I guess that was good though, since as you can see here, I'm a messy pourer. The next day it was hard enough that we could remove it from the forms and start working it. And honestly, this might have been the hardest part of the entire build. As you can see in this series of shots, I had to throw just about every tool at it to get it to release. In any case, once it was out of the form, I used my bandsaw and a table saw to cut a 30 degree bevel onto the top and bottom ends. And once that was done, I could start sanding to clean everything up. So as I said earlier in the video, I did actually need a new headphone stand. But one of my main motivators for making this piece was as a test case for the whole epoxy sandwich idea that I'd like to play with. But actually, how I initially thought of it in my head and how I ended up doing it in this video are kind of opposite of one another. My first idea was that I would build a form to whatever shape that I wanted. Next, I'd cast epoxy in it. And then when it was good and hard, laminate some thin strips to either side, and there you go. Epoxy sandwich. I'm imagining it could be really cool for things like bases on media consoles and all sorts of stuff. That said, the problem that I was having with how to try it on the headphone stand had to do with how small this piece is. My first thought was to use the CNC to cut the shape into a block of wood, or MDF, cast in that, and proceed. But because it's so small, I wasn't sure how I'd seal things off, or basically how I'd get it out without destroying it. So I talked to Mike Clifford from Industrial Maker, and he suggested that I do it in reverse. Make the bent lamination, and cast the epoxy directly into those. It sounded reasonable, so that's what I did for the video. And I'd say that it worked okay. But I definitely do plan on trying it on something larger scale down the road, and doing it the way that I first thought about it, and I guess after that, I'll know which approach was better. Alright, well, thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.